Hello everyone, welcome to you all. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about what do you mean by P and V model in software testing. So basically, before start the V and V model, so in my previous videos, I have discussed about something called waterfall model, spiral model, and SDLC life cycle. So if you guys have not seen my those videos. So I will recommend that you please see my those three videos that is based on SDLC life cycle, spiral model and as well as waterfall model. Then come to this video. So you guys can easily understand that what will be happen on that V and V model. So let's start today's topic that is V and V model in software testing. So what do you mean by V and V model? So V and V basically says that verification and validation so v and v means verification and validation model so v and v stand for verifications and validation model so what are the reason that we are choosing this type of i mean this v and v model so is there something reason yes so in waterfall model and spiral model we got some drawbacks so to avoid this, that drawbacks, avoid that disadvantage, we are choosing this V and V model. So what are the drawbacks are there? So you can um, check check out my those video or otherwise I will give that video's link in this video description. You guys can check out from check out, check it out from there also. Now, so V and V means verification and validation. Verification and validation model. So the reason we choose that V and V model because we have some disadvantage of the uh, we have some disadvantages uh, for waterfall model or spiral model. So overcome those disadvantage, we use that V and V model or verification and validation model. So now, what is the definitions of V and V model? So what do you mean by V and V model? So basically V and V model is a standard procedure or we can say it's a step by step by step procedure develop any kind of software. So it's it is a it is a step by step procedure or standard standard procedure procedure to to develop develop any software develop any software so basically v and v model it's a step by step procedure or standard procedure develop any kind of software okay so now here i am telling you that v and v means verification and validation so now you have to know that what do you mean by verification? Okay. And what do you mean by validation? So what do you mean by verification? Verification. What do you mean by verification? Verification means we are verifying our customer requirement specification. Then software requirement specification. Then high level design. Then low level design. So we are verifying all of these things. And we have to check that whether it is according to the requirement or not. That is called a verification. So in verification, what we are doing? In verification, we are testing. In verification, what we are doing? We are verifying our, our customer requirement specification. Our customer requirement requirement specification then then okay so verification what we will do what we are doing okay 
customer requirement specification, then software requirement specification, then software requirement specification, specification, then what we are doing? We are doing some high level design, high level design and then low level design, low level design. So, verifications means we are verifying our customer requirement specification, then software requirement specification, then high level design, then low level design. So, we are verifying all of these things and we are checking that whether it is according to the requirement or not. That is called is verification. That is nothing but called is verification. Okay. Now, coming to the next one is that what do you mean by validation? What do you mean by validation? So, so okay. So, what do you mean by validation? So, validation means we are now coming before going to the validation. So, who will do that? We will do that verification. Okay. So, basically, it is done by the test engineer. It is done by the test engineer. And it is also done before the software is developed. Okay. So, before the software is developed, the test engineer will do that verification. Okay. So, we can say as a very simple word that, what do you mean by verification? We can say like that. Are we, are we building the product right? Are we building the product right? That is nothing but called as a verification. Now, coming to the next one is that, that is validation. What do you mean by validation? So, validation means Testing the functionality of an application by executing the test cases. So, whenever we are going for any kinds of testing, so before that, what test engineer will do? Test engineer will write some test cases, write some test scenarios, right? So, in validation, we have to test the functionality of an application by executing the test cases is called as a validation. Okay, so it is done by also it is done by the test engineer after the software is deployed or after the software is developed. Okay, so verification is done by the test engineer before the software is developed and validation is also done by the test engineer after the software is developed. So in validation, we can, we can tell like that, are we building right product? Are we building right product? Right product. Okay. Are we building right product? That is nothing but called as a validation. So now you guys are very much clear about that. What is verification and what is validation? Okay. So what do you mean by verification and validation model? So it is a step by step procedure or standard procedure to develop any kind of software. So now, what do you mean by verification? Verification means verifying the customer requirement specification, then software requirement specification, then high level design, then low level design. We are verifying all of those things that it is according to the requirement or not. That is nothing but called it called as verification. So, verification is done by the test engineer before the software is developed. Okay. Now, coming to the next one is that validation. So, validation means we are testing the functionality of an application by executing the test cases. Okay, that is called as validation. So, it is done by the test engineer so before, after the software is developed. Okay, so it is done by the test engineer after the software is developed. Means, in a single simple word, in a simple word, we can say like that. Are we building right product? Okay. So that is called a called is V and V or verification and validation. Now, next topic is that what is the verification and validation model? So 
so i will i will draw some diagram better understand that what do you mean by verification and validation model okay so the the names is v and v model uh, so the shape will be like like v the shape will be like v what is v this is v so like this is v so in v model the shape will be like v okay in that v and v model here the developer are there developer are there and here the test engineer are there okay here the test engineer are present test or tester or qa anything okay so now so in v and v model so what is the definition says that for verification so verification definition says that we are verifying our customer requirement specification so customer requirement specification means crs crs software requirement specification means srs so this is the short form so you have to srs so you have to remember that short name that is what do you mean by crs and what do you mean by srs crs means customer requirement specification and srs means software requirement specification okay so in verification we are verifying these things customer requirement specification software requirement specification high level design and low level design okay so now here the first thing is that the customer has given some requirement as a form of crs as a form of crs means software means customer requirement specification so whenever the customer is giving the crs then what what we will do what we will do then our product manager is coming to the picture okay so our product manager is coming to the picture so what we will do by the project ma product manager the product manager then give the project the, then the project product product manager is coming to the picture product manager what we will do project what will done by the pro product manager the product manager will give that crs to the developer and as well as the test engineer so so the product manager he will give that crs to the developer and as well as tester so he will give that product he will give that at he will give that crs to the developer and as well as he will give that to the developer and as well as the test engineer okay developer and test engineer so in that field in that test engineer here here the acceptance testing will be happen here acceptance testing will be happen acceptance testing it happen here okay so whenever the product manager is giving the crs to the developer and test engineer so then what will do the test engineer the test engineer will review the crs what will do first the test engineer will review the crs then then second point they will write the test engineer will write some acceptance acceptance test plan test plan okay they will write some acceptance test plan now third one is that after acceptance test plan they will write some write some acceptance test cases okay acceptance test case okay so whenever the customer has given some requirement as a basis of crs customer requirement specification then our product manager will give that crs to the developer and test engineer now test engineer will write some uh, test engineer will review the crs they will, they will write the acceptance test plan and they will write the acceptance test cases in that stage acceptance testing will be happen 
okay so whenever the test engineer is writing all of these thing and doing the acceptance testing is if if anything is missed okay so then develop then test engineer will interact with the developer and uh, he will tell i mean test engineer will tell the developer hey something is wrong i think so can you please uh, verify one second whenever then that uh, then the developer will again verify and again give that to the test engineer okay so whenever the crs is done so then coming to the next one is that software requirement specification that is nothing but srs so after crs is coming to the next format it's called srs software requirement specification then again the product manager will come into the picture again the project product manager will come to the picture and what you will do the product manager come to the picture now the product manager will give that srs to the test engineer yeah so he will again give the srs to the test engineer and as well as the developer okay again he will give that to the test engineer and as well as the developer so now here what will happen here the system testing will happen here the system testing will happen so i am writing it like system testing system testing okay system testing will happen so now what we will do so whenever the srs is given to the test engineer then what we will do by the test engineer the test engineer then they will review the srs review the srs srs against against crs okay just so means in one hand srs is there in one hand crs is there so the test engineer will tally will review that srs against crs okay then what they will do they will write the system test plan so they will write the system test plan so after that they will write the system test case okay that is done by the test engineer on that whenever the uh, srs is coming to their hand okay so whenever this is done then srs is done so after the srs what we will do we will go for the high level design okay so we will go for the high level design so then next one is that hld so high level design means hld so now coming to the hld state then again pm or product manager will come into this picture what he will do the product manager will give that hld to the developer and as well as the tester again he will give that to the developer and as well as tester he will give that to the developer and as well as tester so in that phase what testing will be done in that phase some integration testing will be happen integration testing will happen in this stage integration testing now whenever the hld is their hand so then what test engineer will do then test engineer will review review the srs srs sorry review the hld hld against against what srs right they will review the hld against srs okay now they will write the integration test plan integration test plan then they will they will write the inti integration test case okay integration test case why why we are writing integration test case because in that in that phase 
the integration testing testing will be happen so as integration testing will be happen that is based upon integration test plan and integration test case here the system testing will be happen so system test plan system test case here acceptance testing will be happen so that's that's why acceptance test plan acceptance test case okay so in that phase whenever the hld is given um, by the developer and test engineer so in that test engineer in one hand hld is there on the other hand srs is there so they will review the hld against srs okay then they will write the integration test plan then they will write the integration test case okay so whenever it is done then coming to the next one is that what is that that is the low level design that is nothing but called as lld okay we are coming to the next one is that lld that is low level design again again pm or product manager will come into this picture again product manager will come into this picture now product manager will give that lld to the developer and as well as the test engineer give that developer and as well as test engineer now in that phase what testing will be done that phase functional testing will be happen that stage functional testing will be happen that is functional testing so now here what we will do by test engineer now test engineer will review review the LLD against against HLD so in one hand LLD is there and one hand HLD, HLD is there so they will review the LLD against HLD after that what will happen after that next step is that they will write some functional test plan they will write some functional test plan after that they will write some functional test case okay they will write some functional test case so whenever that part is done then means our lld is done so after lld the next phase is that coding coding or development will be happen so whenever the development or coding will be happen then the test the developer will they will himself okay they will himself they will do some white box testing so there is nothing done by the test engineer so developer they will they will start their coding and after coding is done they will do some white box testing okay they will the white box testing where white box testing is done will be done okay so that is done by the developer himself so that is done by the developer himself that is done by the developer himself okay so now whenever the white box testing will be done by the developer then developer will give that software to the test engineer then developer will give that software to the test engineer so i am writing is like te okay developer will give that software to the test engineer means developer has already done the white box testing and they have checked nothing is happening wrong there is no issue so then developer will give that software to the test engineer now test engineer will do the functional testing if there is no defect then after functional testing they will do the integration testing if there is no defect after integration testing they will do the system testing and if there is no defect after system testing they will do the acceptance testing and finally what will happen finally it will the software will after will hand over to the customer okay so customer means we are going to release means we are going to release that software to the customer okay so when everything is done by the tester 
everything is done every testing is done by the test engineer if there is no defect finally we can release that software to the customer okay so this process will happen on that v and v model so verification and validation so here we are doing verification in verifications what we are verifying we are verifying the customer requirement specification software requirement specification high level design low level design then coding etc and on the other hand validations we are doing the functional white box testing functional testing integration testing system system testing and finally acceptance testing after acceptance testing if there is no defect no issue then we can directly release our product or release our software to the customer so that is that is a diagram of verification and validation model or v and v model so first the crs will come means customer requirement specification will come then the product manager will come into this picture product manager will give that crs to the test engineer and as well as the developer then that what we'll do in that page the acceptance testing will be happen so what will what will done by the test engineer they will review the crs they will write some acceptance test plan they will write some um, acceptance test cases whenever it will be done if something is happen wrong on that crs then they will directly go to the developer and developer will again review that thing and again they will give that to the test engineer whenever the crs is done then developer will give some srs software requirement specification so developer whenever that developer is developer will ready the srs by the crs okay then the product manager will come into this picture again product manager will give that srs to the developer and again test engineer so in that phase the test engineer will review the srs against crs they will write some system test plan they will write some system test cases so in that phase system testing will be happen so now coming to the next one is that after srs the developer will create some hld as as the basis on srs so whenever the developer will create some hld then again product manager will come and they will give that hld to the developer and the test engineer in that phase integration testing will be happen so in that phase test engineer will review the hld against srs so whatever is the uh, whatever is there on the H srs they will review on that hld design okay then they will write some integration test plan they will write some integration test cases so again coming to that hld after hld developer will create some lld low level design so again product manager will come to this picture and they will give that lld hld to the lld and uh, they will give the lld to the developer and as well as test engineer so in that phase the test engineer will review the lld against hld they will review they will do they will write some uh, functional test plan they will write some functional test case so in this phase functional testing will be happen after lld is done after low level design is done by the developer then developer will start writing their code means developer will start their coding and after coding is done developer himself will do the white box testing and if there is no error no defect is there by the white box testing process then developer will give that piece of software to the test engineer now test engineer will do the functional testing first if there is no error no defect on the functional testing then they will do the integration testing if there is no defect they will do the system te system testing if there is no defect on the system testing then they will do the acceptance testing so after acceptance testing if there is no defect then finally we are going to release the software to our customer that is the basic flow of v and v model okay so this is the verification and this is the validation that's why it's called as a v and v model so now you guys are very much clear about what is v and v model now coming to the next one is that 
when we use the VNV model in software testing. So, when we can say like that, the first point is that when the project requirements be very clear, when the project requirement should be very clear, then we will go for VNV model. The second one is that there should be clarity about the technologies being used in the project. There should be clarity about technologies being used in the project. Then we will go for VNV model. And third one is that all the members, all the members of the team working on a project that should be well aware of the requirements and technologies of the project. Then we will go for VNV model. And the fourth one is that the project should be sought. Okay, when the project uh, should be short, then we can go for the VNB model. These are the four points when we will go for VNB model or we can use that VNB model for these points. Okay, now coming to the next one is that what is the advantages is there? What are the advantages of VNB model. So, the first advantage I can tell you that the VNB model is a very simple and easy. VNB model is very simple and very easy. Okay. That is the first point. Very simple and very easy. We can say like very simple and easy. The second point of VNB model is that the second advantage is that the biggest advantage is that the documentation is more. I mean, we can say that the uh, documentation is more. So the documentation documentation is more because lots of things were written here. Lots of things: CRS, SRS, HLD, LLD. Then then functional testing test cases, everything, integration test cases, system test cases, acceptance test cases. So, the documents will be more. Okay, that is the advantage. And the third advantage, we can say that, the, I mean, the, it, it is more costly. The initial investment, is investment will be more. Investment will be more. Will be more. Why? Why investment will be more? The investment will be more because you can see that at the same time developer and test engineer both are required. So at the same time developer and tester both are required. So at the same time both developer and test engineer should hired. Okay, so that's why the initial in investment will be more. Okay, the investment will be more. And the fourth one can say like that the the project management is quite easy the project management quite easy quite easy okay so if you see like other models like waterfall model spiral model but in the vnb model if you see that that the project management is quite easy. These are the advantages of VNV model. Now, next one is that these advantages, these advantages, these advantages of VNV model. So, the disadvantage is that we can, uh, so uh, the disadvantage will be like that. So, uh, it's a uh, it's a very risky model very risky model it's a very risky model okay so you can you can make this project man or you can make this documentation is more you can write it on that disadvantage also so documentation is more and then investment will be more so that are the disadvantages 
you can like write that these are the disadvantages. Okay, documentation is more. Okay, then investment will be more. These are the all disadvantages. So what? So the main disadvantage is that it's a very risky model. Here the documentation is more. Here the investment will be more. Okay. So what will be the advantage is that? Advantage is that it's a very simple and easy to use. It's a very simple and easy to use. And we can the second disadvantage we can tell that uh, each and every test will be tested. Each and every stage will be will be tested. Right? Each and every stage will be tested. And project management will be uh, quite easy. Okay. And the advantage we can say that uh, it will uh, less time consuming. You can say that less advantages is that we can say it's a less time consuming less time consuming process because at the same time developer and tester both are work so it will less it will take less time so these are the advantage so advantage is that it's a very simple and easy to use each and every stage will be tested okay because here you can see that each and every test stage we are going to test okay so each and every stage will be tested project management is quite easy and less time consuming because both developer and tester are working parallel okay and advan and disadvantage is that it's a very risky model it's a very risky model because two things will be happening parallelly both verification and both validation both are happening parallelly so that's why it's a very risky model and here the documentation is more so you can see that lots of documentation is there lots of documentation is there and the initial investment will be more because at the same time both uh, developer and tester should be required so that's why it's a very i mean uh, the investment will be more these are the disadvantages of bnb model so now guys i think you are very very much clear about that what is vnv model or verification and validation model if you guys have any doubt please comment me if you guys like my video one thumbs up and share this channel to your friends and subscribe to this channel edupat and clicking on the bell icon so that so guys you can get my videos update notifications first so see you in the next videos with some another topic of software testing thank you